Welcome back. It's still The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa, and we are set for our first major conversation uh, this morning. We have a guest on standby, but let's quickly uh, inform you, if you've not already heard, <laughs> for some strange reason, that the Academic Staff Union of Universities, Nigeria's University Premium, or Premier Universities uh, Staff Union, I think now they're not the only union, so we have to call them their leading one. Um, they've resolved to suspend uh, their indefinite strike action, which has been on for uh, about eight months now. Uh, ASU's decision was taken at the National Executive Council meeting of the union in Abuja early Friday. Uh, a formal announcement is expected uh, to be made Friday morning. It's a marathon meeting that held overnight. They gathered uh, late Thursday night. A member of the ASU um, NEC who was at a meeting Friday morning uh, is quoted as saying that the suspension of the strike was based on last week's ruling of the Court of Appeal which asked the union to obey an order of the National uh, Industrial Court. Um, that the Industrial Court had, had, by granting an injunction sought by the Nigerian government, uh, ordered the lecturers to suspend the strike pending the determination of the substantive suit. Now, joining us to discuss this latest development is Professor Sani Fage. He's a political analyst and senior lecturer at Bayero University, Kanu. Uh, Professor Fage, good morning and thank you very much for your time. Good morning. All right, thank you. Uh, Professor Fage, as was was touting, <laughs> uh, touting the, the court uh, ruling as uh, being, or the court order rather, as the reason why they suspended their strike. Um, but uh, there's been an ongoing engagement between the leadership of the House of Representatives and the union, or the union's leadership. Um, do you really believe uh, or agree that it's, it's uh, because of the court order that they are going back to the classroom? Because they had earlier said they wouldn't go back to the classroom and they had filed an appeal. Yeah, I, I think uh, the court order might have been the major reason uh, for the suspension of the strike. Uh, because, uh, whatever it does, uh, it tries to do it uh, within the ambit of the law. So I, I don't think it be beyond uh, today's uh, deadline, like contempt of court. And that will also, uh, you know, uh, the red uh, process. Because by doing that, maybe also will lose the sympathy of, uh, will be seen as uh, in contempt of uh, uh, the, the law. Uh, that is a major reason. But the other reason is the intervention of the speaker. Uh, Use his good offices uh, to see that um, at least they have reached uh, a certain middle ground. So I think it's a combination of the two. Uh, that is why the strike has been suspended. The hmm. uh, reason I'm asking is uh, because of the stance of, um, of the union, the very hard stance of the union, you know, to say that even if um, they were to, to go back to, to the classroom um, in obedience to, to the court order, uh, while the case is still being uh, before the National Industrial Court, um, that they will, cannot be forced to teach. And the ASU president had given an example of a, a, a doctor who doesn't want to treat you. Uh, would you like to have that doctor treat you? Um, so what do you think the leadership of the House of Representatives were able to bring into this, this, the discussions and the, uh, the conversation that um, the, the Minister of, of Labor and Employment, uh, Senator Dr. Chris Ngigi, and the Minister of uh, Education, Malama Damadamu, were not able to say to us, what do you think um, Baja Amila was able to say to tell them? You know, because uh, the, the, the ASU president said that the, uh, he had seen light at the end of the tunnel. So what light do you think he was referring to? Yeah, I think, I think that, um, you know, provided a kind of uh, middle uh, ground so that is why why uh, the, the ASU chairman said he has seen a light in the end of the channel, uh, because um, even though the details of what happened are yet to be out, but from what we get is that most of the issues 
that uh, led to the strike have been addressed. So that is what as we saying. I think they have seen that the issues have been addressed and that uh, what they want now is a commitment on the government side that these issues uh, will be implemented as agreed upon. For example, one of the contentious issue is, is the issue of no work, no pay. But from what we gather, uh, there is a, you know, a shifting ground from the government side that uh, they are willing to you know, pay at least uh, in trenches. So I think that is a major thing which um, the ed uh, education minister and uh, also the labor minister were not able to do. And the other thing is the issue of uh, revitalization. And they also uh, promised that um, visitation panel report will be, uh, you know, soon uh, addressed. And there are so many of the issues. And the, the most contentious one is that of IPs. So they said that uh, they are going to see that they integrate the issue of hutas into uh, IP. So I think these are some of the things that the speaker was able to achieve, which uh, the two ministers uh, were unable to do. Not that they were incapable, but I think they were unwilling to address uh, these issues. So that is why the strike dragged for eight months. Okay, so now that the strike has uh, you know, been called off, uh, dragged for eight months, do you see a possibility of having all of uh, the students getting back to the classroom and what becomes, you know, of the calendar of the school? Yeah, I, I foresee that, but it all depends on the sincerity of uh, the government uh, to implement what has been agreed upon. Uh, so if the government to, uh, is seen to have taken, you know, uh, a step, a sincere step to address the issues, I think uh, the, the whole process will continue. And the other thing is that um, whenever there is a strike, usually after the suspension of the strike or calling up of the strike, whatever the nature of it, is that uh, members uh, of ASU redouble their efforts to make for the lost ground, uh, which means that uh, perhaps... Uh, uh, holidays, vacations, you know, will be suspended, and then there will be all effort to uh, regain what has. It will be a double work in order to. See, sometimes uh, what happened will be changed, but uh, you know. Uh, or will have to be finished by members of the us. So, so what becomes of, you know, the school calendar? I, I don't remember. I'm sure that the students will also probably struggle, you know. So uh, we talk about the school and the fact that in a session, you're supposed to have a certain month, number of months will make up a session. And so we have uh, this, we're in October, November and December. Do you think that this would be enough for a session for students to go back? and achieve anything? Yeah, I, I think it will be enough. Like I said, what is likely going to happen is that uh, the, the uh, old uh, calendar will have to be changed. Instead of, let's say, like um, uh, 2021, uh, or let's say 21-22 session, they may change it to like 22, 23 session and, uh, you know, do away with the previous one because already, uh, you know, the, the dates, the months have passed. So you can now change the nomenclature of the date, but yet uh, you, reco you recover what you have done, what you are supposed to have done uh, in the uh, uh, last uh, session. Would that also affect, you know, the, the scores, the grades for the student? No, no, no. They, they will continue on that. You know, some one thing is that in Nigeria we don't have uniform uh, calendar. Some are in uh, 2021. Some are in the 21-22 session. So you can now unify that one. And where you stop 
is where you continue. Like uh, those who are about to start exam when uh, the strike uh, started, maybe what do, they will do is now to go back, you know, uh, do the pressure, uh, you know, uh, lectures and this and so that the people will, uh, the student will now, you know, uh, remember, I mean, remember what uh, has been done and then uh, you give them like some few weeks to, you know, uh, go over what was missing, and then you continue with uh, uh, the where you stop. I, I don't think they will say we have cancelled it all over, and then we have to start it uh, afresh. All right, uh, Prof, uh, we, we don't know the details of um, the agreement between the federal uh, government and ASU, or the House of Representatives and ASU, but um, what, what do you expect to happen? Because the um, I mean, I don't know how many Nigerians would uh, would, would uh, smile upon the union holding, you know, uh, keeping the students at home for eight months. Nigerians coming out to express support, even protesting, protesting in support of the union, blocking roads to airports and all that, only for the union to go back to the classroom without, you know, agreeing to anything um, worth, worth talking about. So... Uh, what do you expect? That uh, they would agree, the federal government would agree that we're going to pay you your, your arrears of salaries, I mean, for the, for the months that you've been at home, because that was a fundamental uh, demand of a union. They need the six, seven or eight months salary to be paid to them whilst they were on strike. Um, they also need, you know, the issues surrounding revitalization fund, visitation panel, all that, those things need to be sorted out. And then, of course, the, the entitlements based on the agreements right from uh, uh, when Jonathan was president. So what, what do you expect to see happen um, uh, in terms of agreement? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I think, uh, like I said, even though the details are yet to be out, but from what we can gather... I think a lot of things have been, uh, you know, a, a lot of uh, issues have been addressed. For example, uh, the president in his, in his presentation of the budget set out, uh, you know, uh, some billions uh, uh, that uh, this is going to address the issue of uh, revitalization, which is going to be in the budget. So if it is approved, that is one thing that, uh, you, you know, has been taken care of. And also there is, oh, there are also statements that about 50 billion has, has been set up uh, to pay the earned allowance, and that there were also uh, a statement that uh, the government uh, is willing to pay like four months, um, uh, you know, when the, the thing started, and that before the end of the year, they will pay the rest. So these are some of the challenges. Like, and like I said, the, the issue of the visitation panel, also the government promised that uh, they, they are going to come up with a, a white paper on that, uh, which is one of the contentious issues. And uh, then also the issue of uh, IPs. Like what they say, they, they are going to adjust the thing to take care of uh, the peculiarities of the uh, institutions. And uh, they say from now on, uh, maybe after this thing has been settled, a uh, governing council will be uh, responsible for the unallowance of uh, uh, the university. So these are some of the grounds that uh, I think uh, uh, could be said to be part of the achievement of the speaker and that uh, perhaps uh, when the detail comes out, I think, uh, uh, you know, people will see that, uh, yes, uh, negotiation and bargaining is the most effective way of resolving labor dispute. Yes, but, but, which, but, but, but Prof, uh, uh, what I'm asking is, is it looking at what is um, uh, may, may come out as the agreement? Because, I mean, if you're saying that... Um, uh, a, you know, federal government had attended to all their demands. So why, why, why did they keep stretching this all this while? Because this is what we've been hearing uh, from uh, Chris Ngege. And when the, the negotiation was handed over to Minister of Education to take the lead in, it's what we kept hearing from him, that they had attended to everything. The only matter that was left was um, the issue of whether they will be paid uh, for the months they were at home. And also the, uh, uh, I think maybe the IPPIs, I wasn't really sure. But if this is the situation that the government has, what, what has changed? 
Um, because last time I checked in Gigi, walked out of the meeting, Adama Adamo has not been part of this uh, negotiation between Femi Bajabe Amila and the leadership of ASU. So is it, would, it, would ASU end up being justified to have kept uh, students at home for eight months? Yeah, I think I think that is uh, the bitter truth. You know, the the, tr the strike in the past place should not have taken uh, place because uh, uh, the government could have addressed these issues long ago. Now, even if it happens, it could have not lasted uh, more than two weeks if there is a willingness. Uh, on, uh, you know, both parties to address the issue. But unnecessarily, they kept on dragging it, and it reached to a level that uh, perhaps uh, they, they, there is need for a, a mediator so that we can now save uh, pace on both sides, and uh, which I think uh, that that is what, what will have happened long ago. Uh, the government will have addressed uh, these issues uh, and now, you see, what uh, the speaker did, I think, is, uh, is what um, could have been done much earlier. Because I, I don't know why the government, in its own wisdom, decided to drag it. And uh, now that there is this intervention, uh, now they have adjusted the ground, so quickly, which Professor, they could have done much Prof, earlier. Professor Sani, let's just quickly take this one, because we call it a wrap in no time just in a minute or a few seconds. Uh, in other words, you're saying that we're dismissing the thoughts that uh, the decision to call of the strike by, uh, you know, ASU is not based on the fact that there was a court ruling, because that's what they have said. It's based on the court ruling, and that's why. And this is to allow further conversation conditionally. Therefore, means that there's a tendency that they might just also go back if, you know, the government does not meet up with it. So are you saying that um, this is not the case? And if that's what it is, what's the reason that ASU should be lying? I mean, why should they come up and say that we're calling off the strike because of a court ruling and we're giving room for further conversation? What's the essence for no, I, other shenanigans? No, I said, I said court ruling was the major reason why ASU had to shift ground, you know, to, to go back to work. But what I'm saying is what buttress... Uh, the court ruling and what makes it easier, you know, for the uh, ASU to shift ground is also the mediation of the speaker. So it's not only one reason that, uh, uh, you know, uh, led to, uh, to where we are today, but I think uh, the court ruling is the major re reason, but we cannot dismiss the, uh, the, you know, intervention of the speaker because that is why you now you have referendum and uh, you know based on uh, the referendum, I mean the, the promises in the speaker's intervention. That is why you have, you have uh, almost majority uh, of the uh, campuses, you know, uh, agreeing to suspend the, you know, uh, the, the strike. Otherwise, if not for the combination of this, you know, we have some people who are going and saying that, look, it is not a contempt if you now, since you have appealed, you can go and challenge the law and so on and so forth. But what they make it easier is the combination of the two. All right. So All right. there's a tendency that, you know, Asu might go, go back, you know, on strike. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Professor Sunny Fage, we have it's to go. It's not a follow-up of we the strike. Yes. Professor Fage, thank you so much for your time. We have thank to go. We definitely would will, will have uh, some opportunity to discuss this again. Um, and uh, congratulations to you. Um, I'm sure that uh, your students can't wait to return to classroom and enjoy from your uh, draw from your well of knowledge. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Right. And uh, we have more discussions ahead, Mercy. Uh, definitely. We take a break now, and when we return, we'll be looking at, you know, the flamingos. Uh, just stay with us. <laughs>